All right, in this short little video, I want to show you how to determine the patient's heart rate according to their EKG, specifically using the six second method. Now you can use this six second method regardless of whether their heart rate is regular or irregular or irregularly irregular like we see with atrial fibrillation. So if, their patient, if your patient's heart rate is irregular, you have to use this six second method. Other methods aren't accurate but you can also use this six second method even if their heart rate is nice and regular. So let me go ahead and show you on an actual EKG. All right, so here's our 12 lead EKG and as you can see, um, we've got our limb leads here, one, two, three, our augmented leads and our precordial leads. And then on this particular machine, it printed lead two out across the bottom as a nice rhythm strip. So this rhythm strip becomes a really nice convenient uh, area on the EKG for us to interpret things like regularity and rate. So if you look closely at this, uh, this is a regular rhythm. The R waves are going to march out and we know we can use multiple methods to determine the rate, but in this case we're going to use the six second method. Now some machines are going to mark little tick marks across the top something that might look like this. Now these aren't exactly where they might be on a machine, but just for demonstration purposes, these little tick marks that uh, some machines print are going to be marking it at three seconds, so you can kind of quickly be able to say, okay, well there's six seconds, okay? But most of the time you might want to actually count it out. So if you remember one big box, okay, or these five millimeters is 0.2 seconds, which means five of these big boxes will be one second, which means 30 big boxes will be six seconds. So we're gonna go ahead and count these out. I usually try to find there an area where there's a QRS, you know, a, a, a dark line and then a QRS complex and I start counting on that dark line. So in this case, I'm gonna say here is zero and I'm gonna count these out and go 30 boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. <sighs> 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, so here's 30 boxes, which means from here to here is six seconds of time, all right? So then what we wanna do is determine how many full cardiac cycles occurred within those six seconds. One quick way to do this is to just go R wave to R wave because one span from R wave to R wave is the equivalent of one cardiac cycle. We could also say from you know right between a T wave and a P wave to the next spot between a T wave and a P wave. That's one cardiac cycle. But it's quicker to go from R wave to R wave. So in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, almost 13, okay? So notice how this, we started counting right before this QRS and this one ends right, so the next QRS is right after it, so it technically, if we were to shift QRSs over onto those big boxes, we would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 full cardiac cycles. We want to do 13 times 10 to make this 60 seconds, which means we've got 130 beats per minute on this EKG. All right, so what about this one? This one here, if you look at the regularity, it is irregularly irregular. Notice how this interval from R to R is not the same as here to here, which is not the same as here to here, okay? So we know this is an irregularly irregular rhythm, and this happens to be atrial fibrillation. So because it is an irregular rhythm, we have to use the six second method to determine rate. So notice this machine actually gives us three different rhythm strips to choose from. It's printed V1 out across the whole thing, lead two out across the whole thing, and V5 across the whole thing. So we can use any of these. It's the same duration of time, same events happening. We just choose whichever one we want. In this case, I'm gonna use V5 because it's down here right at the bottom. All right, there you go. There's our 30 boxes, six seconds of time. We wanna count out our R to R intervals now, or our full cycles. All right, there we go. So we have 12 full R to R intervals. Notice how it's just more than 12. We're gonna go ahead and count it as just 12. So we've got 12 times 10 equals 120 beats per minute. All right, so here's another example. In this case, 
um, all we're getting is the rhythm strip. And like I had mentioned earlier, remember those tick marks? Well, in this example, you see we have these tick marks. And so in this case, each tick mark is at three seconds. So we know this whole rhythm strip is six seconds. We don't need to worry about counting out our 30 boxes for this specific example. But uh, notice we've got a P wave, QRS, T wave, and the same. Um, they're further spread out though, and we're gonna use our six second method here again. Notice we've got one R to R interval, a second one, and a third one. So if we just went from R to R interval, we would maybe say that this was, okay, well we've got three times 10, is this 30 beats per minute? Okay, we would be off a little bit if we were to say 30 because notice we kind of have about another half. So we could say we have three and a half in this situation and so we would maybe be more accurate to call this one 35 beats per minute. And so if, if you have more of a, a half of a cardiac cycle present towards the end, especially when we're dealing with bradycardia, go ahead and call it a half. Okay, well I've got three and a half or I've got four and a half in my 30 boxes, so I'm gonna go ahead and you know call it 3.5 rather than three. And that's going to give you a more accurate estimation of the patient's actual heart rate. All right, there you go, nice and short, six second method. Hopefully that was helpful. Please don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the little thumbs up button, change that bell notification to on so that you get notified every time I post a new video. Thanks for watching.